All right, Troop Swift here. So 3D Canvas, uh, the Ripper 93's module for Foundry that we use to do all this 3D stuff, is getting constant updates and improvements on a weekly or even sometimes daily basis. So today we're going to go over the most important updates that have happened across February and March of this year, not including new features that I've already covered in previous videos or all the patches, fixes and other minor improvements that have been happening constantly. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is actually a more recent update from the second half of March. The new user experience got a massive upgrade in the form of comprehensive feature tours. What this means is that when you first install 3D Canvas and do all the usual module enabling stuff, you'll get this window here, the 3D Quick Start Tour. Clicking on Start Tour will start the initial tutorial to create a new scene with the Quick 3D Scene feature, show you the basic controls and how to navigate in 3D Canvas, and introduce you to the features bar on the right here that we'll talk more on in a moment. Once you've gone through that initial tour and poked around a bit, I definitely recommend using this tour button here, which opens up the tour management window. There's several tours in here that are great for getting an initial grounding in how to do a few of the more important things in 3D Canvas, so very useful for any new user, and great for showing just how easy this all is, despite how intimidating it might look to begin with. Speaking of this handy pop-out though, this might be new to some of you. Along with the new user experience improvements, 3D Canvas has also had a lot of general UI improvements, the most visible example being this bar here. A lot of the commonly used features have been given their own dedicated button on this pop-out. It starts to collapse like this, so if you just see a little box, just click that there. Very handy to have these features here, I'd say. The less clicks required to access the main features, the happier everyone's going to be. For a few examples, we've got the environment button to start with that lets you change the sky, the time of day and the weather the terrain feature for generating new terrain, as you've seen before, most likely. The asset browser being just below that, named Props now. And also as part of the new user experience, when you first open certain important windows, you'll also get a tour automatically starting, like for example the asset browser window tour here. That'll again take you through what each of these buttons do, uh, how to use them, and how to best kind of optimize your scenes. Very helpful. And of course you can just X out if you already know how to do things. So going back to looking at these updates roughly chronologically, the first one that I feel is really relevant is the token browser. While you've got the settings for a token open, this stick figure in the 3D model field here will open up the token browser, showing you the painted minis from the 3D canvas token compendium. For me this has been very useful for, uh, for example, very quickly putting down NPCs on monsters that maybe I haven't planned for the party to encounter. There is a lot of stuff in here, and there's always new stuff being added, so definitely recommend people give this a look when they get a chance. While I've got this guy here, I'll show another feature that's been added. If you've got a token above the ground, for example if it's flying, there's now a vertical indicator below them to show exactly where they are. It also has a diamond every vertical square, so that you can see exactly where they are in terms of their height. For example, this guy is 5, 10, 15 feet up, if you're playing a DD 5e at least. And the last thing for this quick little update video I'd like to look at is the Decal Dynamesh, the uh, best shown with the effects browser here. So the way this works is, you take an image file, like in this case say an acid splash on the ground, and because of the Decal Dynamesh, it dynamically changes its shape to follow the contours of the ground, even if you move it around. For example, so this is very useful for spell effects that you just want to be able to drop down arbitrarily to any location. And of course, it's not just limited to the images here in the effects browser. You can do it with any image. You can load your own in, and of course, you can apply shaders to them and also use animated textures to really kind of mix things up a bit here. Like for example, if I put the fire shader on it set the intensity way up. Here we've got a puddle of fire. Uh, the red triangle is just something that you can use to select the uh, decal. Once you go back to token mode, that disappears. So that's been a very quick look at some of the most important updates from February and March. Overall, I'd definitely say the improved new user experience is the biggest thing. If you've been holding off on checking out the 3D stuff because it just looks like it might be too complicated or too difficult to use, I'd definitely recommend giving it a go and checking out some of these new tours. 
Likewise, if you felt that the UI was maybe a bit clunky before, or things were just too hard to do about three-ish months ago, I'd certainly recommend giving it another look and seeing what improvements Ripper has been making to the UI. He's been working pretty hard on it, and he continues to work hard on it, so I'd definitely give props to him for that, for making this a whole lot more accessible. For now though, that's all for this video. As ever, I'd appreciate your feedback on these videos or the 3D stuff or any of the other content we make. I'd love to hear from you. See you later.